Richard Turner. Richard Turner. Been looking with both eyes, I couldn't see how he did it. Richard Turner, he does things that nobody else in the world can do with cars. Nobody. I don't call myself blind because I see things in ways that other people can't see. He's in the Hall of Fame at the Magic Castle. Don't let anyone tell you there's anything you can't do. I got a question for you, Mr. Shark. Can you tell us how many guppies you have won over the years? Uh, I'm kind of always reluctant to talk about that uh -huh. because I consider myself a piker. Right, what's Com that? Piker? Uh, Low player. Oh, okay. Compared really? to people, oh yeah, compared to people like Titanic Thompson, who would bet ten thousand oh, dollars on wow. a, on the putt of a single golf hole, or my buddy Steve Forty, who played in much much bigger games. So I always consider myself a a, a small player, small potatoes. Is that because you've been doing it more for entertainment, whereas they kind of like have been doing like more of the game, like yeah. you know, actual cheating in the yeah. game world? But some people would say that I still played for a decent amount of money, yeah. but compared to some of these big ah. hustlers, I still consider myself a small player, even gotcha. though, uh, I mean, when I played blackjack, I, my, my average bet was $500. Right. You know, so, you know, now I won't do that now, but back then that was just my average uh, range. Speaking of back then, when would you say your gambling heydays were? Gambling heydays were between 84 and 88 is when I have to slay, say I slightly compromised some of my values mm -hmm. where these mobsters had turned them down and I mm. started uh, Good choice. play. Yeah, I started uh, sometimes having the cards do things they probably shouldn't have done. So 84 to 88 Got it. is when I was more into the bigger play. Now, you kept a cigar box, and I know sharks don't smoke, so what was in that cigar box? It relates to what I was just talking about. Uh -huh. I had a cigar box. Yeah. Inside were stacks of bills, mm. and the $100 bills would be a stack of about 150 bills, which is $15,000, mm -hmm. and I'd put one rubber band around it, mm -hmm. which stood for one 100s. Yeah. Right. The 20s which is 150 yeah. bills, which is $3,000. Mm -hmm. I'd have two rubber bands around mm -hmm. it, and I could, by touch, mm. I could instantly know how much money I had in my nice. cigar box. If I had a bunch of yeah. ones, that was 15, 30, and so on, 20. That's why you, know, you like rubber so much. That's why yes. you, you cut that. Yep, I use them for everything. Now, as the shark is swimming a bit slower these days, I hear the little blue guppies are a good bedroom pick-me-up. What no. does that mean? And why did you have to ask that question? Well, it's in my list. Oh, you are so sneaky. It. Put it in there. Yeah, well, I'm headed to 70. I've been married to my beautiful wife, Kim, for 33 years. Mm -hmm. And I love loving with her as much as I ever did. Mm -hmm. And as the older man is slowing down, uh, my gambling wins were more to pay for the high price of those little blue guppies. Mm. But now that the patent has expired mm -hmm. and I can now have a double date with a Disney one hour wait for a two minute ride, I can afford it. And what a ride it is. I am not going to press for detail. You're We're going to go to the next question. I don't blame you. The shark created a way to play poker without chips called Zero Plus. Explain that to us. Intriguing. Yeah, well, because I gambled everywhere. Everybody mm -hmm. that has known me pretty much all my adult life will say they've played Zero Plus. It was mm -hmm. a system I came up with, gosh, a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. maybe a thousand years ago, well, half a century at who's least. Who's counting? Who's counting? And call me Methuselah. So basically what it is, it's a way of being able to play without the need of chips. Mm. So you can be anywhere in the management or whatever. They have no idea you're playing for money. It's zero plus. Zero meaning one person has zero dollars, the other person has plus. Mm -hmm. So there's a way of following the money. And as you would win, if you won 50 bucks, you would be plus 50, mm. okay, switches up 50. Mm -hmm. In the next hand, if I won 100, it would reverse, you'd be zero, I'd be 50. So you always, or all you have to keep track is whoever's up. I'm up 
50. I'm up 100. Right. Here, here let's uh, I'll just I was just going to say, I'd love to play a hand of this. I'll try it. I'll Is try that it. what we're about to do here? <laughs> Why not? Ooh, okay. And I love it. Now, back in the old days. I'm some money. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, mm -hmm. six, seven, seven. Okay. And because mm -hmm. I no longer can see any cards, mm -hmm. so the only thing I can play now is... No peak because mm -hmm. it's the only thing that's fair. Texas yeah. Hold'em, seven star was my seven stud was my favorite game, mm -hmm. and my, I'm sure this is going to be nothing but fair. Yeah, right. And my my friend Adam, you know, we're creating the ability to play all games. Right. Where uh, we will have a dealer, an app that will be able to tell me my cards if I'm playing Texas Hold'em or if I'm playing. Texas Showdown or Shark Showdown, mm -hmm. but right now we're playing no peak uh, because that's all I can play fairly. So right. what happens is you'll turn over a card, okay, and you'll say what it is. I have the ten of hearts. Oh, ten. Now you could right now we we'll just go a, a dollar and each. So that okay. means there's two dollars in the pot. Like I said, if you really want to sucker somebody and you just yeah. sell them, it's a twelve and a half cent ante, which means there's a quarter in the pot. Okay. We're make it a dollar in the pot. So that means yeah. there's two dollars altogether. I have a dollar, you have a dollar. Yeah. So you can either bet if you said two dollars goes to two or one, that means you bet a penny. Right. Which is boring. Boring. Or you can say go two to three, which means yeah. you bet fifty percent. Okay. Or you can say two to four, which means you bet the most that's right. in the pot. Okay. You have a ten, which is a pretty good card. So what yeah. are you gonna bet? I'm a two to four. Oh, you're a little sneaky. I'm feeling good. You're feeling good. What's that? A little measly three. That does not beat a ten. Nope. I have to beat your card. What's mm -hmm. that? Oh, you got two threes now. I mean, <laughs> that I go. beats your ten. Okay. So it's at four. Four will go to eight. Okay, four to eight. I have a king. That, that doesn't right. beat my threes. Turn over again. Two kings. Oh, now I'm in trouble. So you have the bet and Eight a pair of kings. to 16, is it? You can go to 16 if go that's 16. the maximum. I mean, I got a I'm going to round it up to 16 to 25. Okay. I feel lucky. Okay. Okay, even though I'm, I shouldn't, shouldn't be betting into kings, but yeah. I have to beat your uh, cowboys. What's yeah. that? Oh, you got three threes. Now I feel uh, really trouble. good. Now, well, What's maybe three kings will kill, will kill me. Okay. Okay, so it's at 25. 25 yeah. goes to 50. I bet okay. the maximum. Perfect. I got a 10. I got a full house. Are you serious? No way. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. What? Uh, you have two I kings and math. two 10s, right? I failed math in high school. I guess you did. I got to do another one. Two kings, two 10s. Uh, uh, three kings. Now I got a full house. No. Ha ha. Okay. Now, what now are the I'm chances worried. of that? Okay. What's it at? 50 right now? Yeah. Okay. So 50 to 100? You can go to 100. Now, it. here's the big question. Okay. If I have another three, I'll beat your full house. The odds are against you. There's no way. Yeah, the odds are against me. But if you have another king... Mm -hmm. You'll slaughter my threes, which means I'll be in trouble. I like the but, sound of that. Uh, but a slaughtered shark. I, yeah, I I'm just for the sake of adventure. We're at a hundred right now. Yeah, hundred to two hundred. Easy money. So you going for it? Oh yeah. All right. So I have to beat a full house. What's that? Oh, that's uh, four threes. That beats the full house. Right. 200 goes to 400. Oh, I got a 10. I got three tens, three kings. Well, that, that's still, you only get to use five cards. You need one more king to pay. Okay, uh, uh, two. Is that, that a wild card? Uh, no, nah, we deuces didn't call it. Deuces, it would have been, if it was, I would have been in history, but we Dang didn't it. save deuces are wild. Dang it. Dang it. That means I Is am, that all your cards? Yeah, that's all okay. I got. And the thing is, that means you can't beat my 4-3, so I'll play out the rest of the hand. So I would be wow. up uh, $400, I think is where. Wow. So I'd be zero plus. Now, say in the next hand, you want mm. $500, then in yeah. the reverse, right. you'd be plus 100. All you wow. have to do is keep track of the one person. I've had friends that I've played this for years and years yeah. and years. So I've, you play this a lot? Oh, yeah, every all, all the time. When yeah. we're sitting and standing in line, uh, my friend Gene Holtman, we played it thousands of times wow. tens of thousands yeah. well thousands of times wow. easily and we'd play it we go we'd go to master kerbin's mm -hmm. work out mm -hmm. we'd go to the jack Lane health spa mm -hmm. do a weight workout and we'd go to the pool i'd pull out my plastic kim cards i'd say you ready oh so you could play this in the pool oh yeah yeah because wow. there's no chips needed wow so wow. i we played it everywhere i played mm -hmm. it in the ocean i played it in the pool i played it every restaurant standing in line mm -hmm. um anyway it's, it's just a handy way of being able to play and then you just keep a running yeah. tab basically right with all the money people owe you well that's that usually the other way well no oh. i've uh, when i'm playing it i'm playing fair okay most of the time. Okay, that's but, but no, when I'm playing with Fred, right. it's 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 fair. But I'm 
a pretty decent player. So, but my like my son, he grew up playing. He's played thousands of hands. Mm. My wife has played yeah. thousands of hands. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Did uh, Vegas like Gene and the show? Well, Gene and I, we literally traveled across from California to Florida, Florida, just yep. gambling everywhere we mm. went. And Vegas was kind of short and sweet. Mm. <laughs> I had some adventures there. Mm -hmm. The funniest one, mm -hmm. we were playing at the Nugget. Oh, and I heard the third time was a charm at the Golden Nugget. So you that's switched right. coats. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Uh -huh. So finally they go, Richard, you may as well leave. We're not dealing you another <laughs> hand. Jig was up. Yep. And what would happen is, see, Gene would tell the dealer, he said, my friend can't see too well. Yeah. too well, so yeah. I'm going to call off the cards. Mm. While well, he called off the cards, I kept the count, and then I would cue him mm -hmm. on how to bet, mm. okay? Now, this is before there were much more sophisticated ways that people are doing this now. Yeah. We're talking about back in the 80s, yeah. so we weren't as sophisticated in our mm. deception. So, we're kicked out. Mm. I said, Gene, yeah. let's switch coats and we'll sneak back in and what see if we can idea. play some more. So I took my coat off, yeah. switched it with his, yeah. and he looks at the back of my cart and he stop, coat and he starts laughing. He says, what? he says, you have American Black Belt Academy coat on? And I had American Black Belt Academy <laughs> coat on. We were both martial artists. Yeah. So we literally switched one coat for the other. We had the exact same coats on. Was I ever bright on that stupid idea? Well, we'll <laughs> just switch away from that for We now. had to switch away from That's that. It's embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Who was Ping Pong Freddy? Ping Pong Freddy Ping Pong was, Freddy. He, he, Ping Pong got his name after World War II. Mm -hmm. He was a very p a competitive tennis player, table mm. tennis they call it, mm. tennis player. And so mm -hmm. he called him Ping Pong Freddy because he was a champion tennis player, mm. ping pong player. Yeah. And so he opened up after the war. Mm -hmm. uh, he had an establishment, I'll use mm -hmm. that word discreetly. Mm -hmm that was really an art museum, mm. which was actually a front for high stake, illegal gambling, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. And the laws in Texas are, you can gamble legally any amount, right? only two laws basically. Okay. One, no cheaters, mm -hmm. flagrant discrimination against me. Mm. Discrimination. Mm. Two, the house cannot take a rake. Right. A piece of the action. In other words, at the end of each pot, the yeah, house percentage? cannot take a piece of the ah, okay. piece of the That's pot. A rake. That's a rake, and so which is how they make their money in the casinos. Yeah. Ah. So you cannot. Uh, otherwise, you would be a gambling establishment yeah. if you, if he was taking a rake, right. which Freddie gleefully did. Hmm. So his games were illegal. And since ping pong uh, was a little slippery. Uh -huh. Did the shark come after him? What did the shark do to bite? Let me just tell you a little bit about Ping Pong. He okay. was an obsessive player. When we oh. met, he was 63 years old at the time. Mm. I was, I don't know how old I was. It was yeah. 85 or so. Yeah. And uh, so he was 63 and just obsessive gambler. Obs right. And he was the type of con man that would make, try to make you, right. make you feel good about taking your money. Oh, he was, a charmer. He, he was a charmer, yeah. a jolly good. He was yeah. just trying to hustle you on everything. I can imagine him being like, here, take this $10. Go get yourself some breakfast. Oh, thanks, Ping Pong. You only took 1000 from me. Yeah, I know. Something, you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. That was good old Ping Pong. Just yep. a jolly, jolly good yeah. guy. He would tell me. Yeah. Hey, while the girls are out, yeah. let's play a little heads up poker. Oh, fun. And because, mm -hmm. you know, I had a hard time with colors on chips. Yeah. Right. Sometimes we use chips, mm. but what we'd have to do is use all the same color because right. I couldn't discern the red oh. from the white from yeah. the blue. You know, right. the blue is usually, usually yeah. the highest value the white, the least, and red right. in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so we would just have all red or yeah. all blue or something, so I yeah. didn't have to, and it's designated as a certain, right. you know, these are all $5 right. chips or all $20 mm -hmm. chips. But m the other time, we just played zero plus. Right. I mean, he, I played with him so much, he, we did that more than we did anything oh, okay. else because it was just easy to yeah. do. We didn't need chips. Right. And uh, we would play, and the thing is, and I actually did this with a lot of players, mm -hmm. You know, when, uh, my favorite was heads up poker. Right. I played a lot of heads up poker mm -hmm. with a lot of significant people. Right. One heads up being one on one, but I'd play in, you know games. Oh, with so, so heads up can only be two players. Two players. Got heads it. up is heads up's two Got players, it. 
and uh, which was my favorite way of playing. Mm. But I did play a lot of games where there are multiple players and mm -hmm. a lot of stories there. Yeah. And even on those games, mm -hmm. I was kind of hard for people to read. Mm. Steve Terrell taught me how to look at people. Like right now, I'm trying to look at yeah. the camera and give the impression that I'm looking right, right. into well, the camera. you have the perfect poker face because you can't see them and so they can't um, read. Right. You're like you don't and, have to hide anything. Right, and the thing is, and then I would not do my best to look at them right. in the eye. Mm -hmm. I would look at them where I could actually see them, which was mm. out of the corner. So now I'm looking at you here, ah, but my sneaky. vision, my head is over yeah. here. Sneaky. When my head's over here, I'm now yeah. seeing whatever yeah. I could see of you. Right. So sneaky. ping pong is a thought, a thought across from me. Yeah. And of course, I'm looking over here because mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to get a, a glimpse of what he's doing. Yeah. And he was kind of slippery. Mm -hmm. Every time I would cut the deck, he would do this. Yeah. Ah. He would peek the bottom yeah, yeah, card. Yeah. Just knowing one card yeah. creates a, a minor statistical advantage. Right. And then he also had this habit of when he was getting ready to deal, yeah. he would peek my card as uh -huh. he would deal it to me. So, and he didn't know I was catching yeah. and his actions. Like well, of course, he opened the door. So I figured I could open the door. Exactly. But the thing is with ping pong, yeah. I always had to deal with the cards on the table. I played a lot of people, mm -hmm. and that were the conditions, because everybody knew my reputation. I yeah. was known as Richard Turner the Cheat, right. the card shark, the mechanic, and all these other whatever, credits. Yeah. And so that when I would play, I had to deal from off the table. Well, how would you build a hand then? Well, sometimes they'd let me shuffle, but one of my favorite methods mm -hmm. was at the end of play, four, five, say we had, we had our showdown, mm -hmm. whatever the cards were, I would do the best I could to memorize the, the power cards. Say there were some mm. aces and kings. Is this kind of similar to card counting? Sort of. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not quite. But I would remember those good cards, and I'd try to get as many towards the bottom as possible. Yeah. And I would maintain them on the bottom yeah. as I shuffled, okay? Ah. And then I would give the deck a small cut. So yeah. I now brought them about 13 cards or so from the top. Mm. And then when Fred cut the deck... Now those cards that I memorized would never come into play. Mm. So there's a whole series of cards I knew yeah. not to deal with oh. based on what I was given. Yeah. So that was my main way of doing things is by yeah. just knowing what was not going to oh, come into play. Interesting. And I've literally won thousands of hands wow. by knowing what's not going to come into play. It's a little advantage, but yeah. it's a marketable advantage. So you won a few guppies. I way. won a few guppies. I won a few guppies. Yeah, a few guppies. And finally, the, the, we had the big market crash. It was a Black Monday, what do they call it? Black Monday, 1988, I think it was mm -hmm. the big market crash. And, uh, and Freddy's games are getting harder. And uh, Are you telling me the good times came to an end? Good, time, good times came to an end end with ping pongs. He said, I don't know, you know I have a few moves up my sleeve, but yeah. what you're doing is just on a level I can't deal with. Right. He and was smart enough to know that the shark of. is sharp. Well, he should have been smarter a little bit sooner. Ah. But he was such an upset, he was such an addict, addict to yeah. gambling. I loved it so ah. much. And then here's another little sneaky hmm. thing that I would do. Boy. That you know, it, it, through the course of time, mm -hmm. you know, every, every now and I'd casually pick up the cards and just speeding things up. I'd pick it up and shuffle yeah. it. And then I'd set it back on the table when I would go to deal. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that just gave me advantage is I, I would say in the process of the, of the previous hand, I would mm -hmm. call. I'd take three of a kind, say mm -hmm. three sevens. Yeah. And I'd make sure they're on the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maintain them there. Right. And then go through the whole business. And, uh, and, and, and usually I would, I would hold them out and then, right. you know, if we're doing the cut. Yeah, yeah. So they're there. So now right. I'm still dealing off the table mm -hmm. and I would just really push the envelope. In other words, I'm just raising because when it got down to it, okay, mm -hmm. now say I have a pair. Mm -hmm. And usually we played a five card draw and we would play two draws. Okay. And so uh, what I would do is that when he's looking at his hand, I would casually... I would casually just, uh, I'll do it openly, yep. shift five cards from the ah, bottom to the top sneaky. and then lay the deck back down, just, yeah. just doing yeah. it casually. Then when it's his draw, and I would hope mm -hmm. that he was only going to draw two cards, right. okay? 
So he draws two. Because you wanted the ones you just placed. You wanted as much as possible. I want those three of a kind yeah. that are on yeah. the bottom. So, so that, and the reason ah. for that is I'm in, he still sees me dealing from off the table yeah. for his draw. Yeah. And then I, and I say I had a pair. Now mm -hmm. I have a full house. Right. So I'm filling ah. a full house. I, yeah. get, I get a lot of full houses. Yeah. And now say he took three cards. Mm -hmm. One, two. He took three cards. So he yeah. took one of my cards. Right. Now it's a matter of who has the, I figure that means he probably has two pair. Right. And it was a matter of who had the best two pair. Right. You know, and I would know, you know, based on what my cards in my hand were, say there were uh, two kings and two sevens. I know mm -hmm. I had kings, kings up. And uh, so that was uh, another little uh, sneaky thing that I did keeping the, the cards on mm. the Table. But the shark still wanted that Jordani. Oh, and well, well, here's the fun thing. Yeah. Finally, Ping Pong says, "No more play, Richard." Yeah. Things are getting tight. His right. games were getting less, yeah. and his players were yeah. getting hurt. He actually, his place, one guy lost two million dollars. Wow. At Freddie's place, wow. and, he, and it was paid off in antiques, bronzes, all this fine stuff. He lost right. two million dollars mm -hmm. over the course of a period of time. Mm. And that's what I wanted. I was an antique fanatic. Mm. And I had just built this, well, about three years before this beautiful, elegant home. I was using Freddie to yeah. help furnish my home. And I got lots of goody, goody, goodies. Mm. And one time, one time I actually left this place with an 18-wheeler. Wow. With, full of stuff. Wow. But uh, what, what, finally what it got down to is no more play. Yep. Because I'd let him pay off his debts mm -hmm. with, uh, with by giving me antiques. his antiques exactly. Very nice of you. And uh, and and sometimes I'd compensate a little bit. Yeah. Say, well, you know, this this is valued at this. And oh, here, I just remember the story. Yeah. He had one item in his thing behind this big desk. Yeah. Big king chair. Yeah. And I would see it and I go, Wow, Freddie, this is magnificent. Yeah. And he said, I can't let that go. If you want that $2,500, okay? Mm -hmm. $2,500. What was it? It was, a, it was a king chair. Yeah. Had a, the head of a lion, male mm -hmm. lion, mm -hmm. went down to the feet, went back up, and the tail of the lion went up here and around and down. Sort of like when the ta my, ta my king chair at my house. Mm -hmm. But this one was far more elegant. Here's the joke on me. Mm -hmm. I thought, I want that. Yeah. So I, the, the next day I said, Freddie, I think I want to buy that chair from you. The next day, he sold it to some guy in Dallas. What? Guess what? What? It was worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He was going to sell it for twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. It would wow. turned out it was from the fifteenth century. Oh, he didn't even know. He didn't know. Huh? Wow. Somehow somebody lost it there. Wow. And I I was that close oh. to having. I kick, to this day I kick myself. But anyway, but I got a lot of other bronzes yeah. and coming through the rye, Remingtons. Did he have anything left in his house when you were done with him? Oh, yeah, he did. But I, I, t I, I furnished my house. Table. I mean, with. Do you still know, have all that? I have some of that table we play poker on. Yeah. That came from his. Oh. And then finally, he got old and I mm. moved on. And, yeah. And, oh, and one time he said, Richard, I have something to show you. Yeah. Right, because what I did. Since he wouldn't play anymore, I said, Freddie, yeah. tell you what, I know how you can get get back in the wind. Yeah, what? I'll teach you a few moves. Because ah. he had a few moves. Mine were better. Oh, you played too as addictive. I, 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 exactly. Like so a moves? I gave him some moves that he was able to do. And it was a simple thing. Yeah. Uh, as he would, uh, when he would hold his cards, he would go like this. Yeah. He would just do this and back. I'm exaggerating. Right. Yeah. And he would put a little crimp ah, yeah. in the a face cards, bend. a little bit yeah. in the face cards, okay? Yep. And so you put it in and you yep. take it back out. So it's out. Ah. But when you're dealing, it's, you, loose, it's uh, weaker. It, it's exactly, it's mm. weaker. So and you'd play it with, with low ball. Yeah. He'd play low ball. low ball. That means the lowest hand wins. Okay, got so it. So if you knew if you if you knew that guy just got a jack, king, or queen, yeah. they're oh. a sucky hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so by that little uh, crimping thing that I, well, he was able to handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in his next game, he won like 15,000 on Friday, 15,000 on Saturday. So his uh, money was coming up. And back then, that was, you know, that was a decent payday. Mm -hmm. And then he surprised me. Yeah. He said, Richard, I want you to see this. And so he brought me up to this 30 by 40 portrait yeah. that he had done. And it was of me. Wait a second. Is that did that creep you out, or did you think that was cool? Because 
a, a por random portrait of you at his house? Yeah, well, what you've seen it. it. Yeah. you see seen that, it? Oh, that's the one you the have. One, the, to the right of my fireplace. Right. The gambling oh. one. And yeah. so what was your reaction that he had Well, this? it was very kind of him. He yeah. contracted a, a prominent painter to do that portrait, and he yeah. took some old uh, photo that he had of me, and it you know, has wow. me pulling the pistol and the mm -hmm. cards ribbon spread yeah. you know, across the table yeah. with it you know, frozen right. right here. And, yeah, that's and cool then. Remember that one? And yeah. I used it on all my, my DVDs, the yeah. cheat DVDs. Oh yeah, and, they're all over the place. Yeah, and your yeah. deck of cards too. My, car, yeah, my cards and wow. Texas Showdown, the original Texas Showdown has that logo on there. But that's where it came from oh. and it was a gift. He said that wow. He said that little uh, crimping that you taught me has really paid off. So that was a oh, wow. little nice gesture on his end. And when he passed away Wait, at 91, I heard you had a last big surprise. Uh, that is so true. And it wasn't very long ago. This is probably, yeah. gosh, maybe five years ago, yeah. eight years ago, wow. something. Time goes by so fast mm -hmm. it's hard to keep track. Yeah. But I, my wife says, hon, you might want to come listen to this message. Mm. And it was from the executor of Ping Pong's estate. Mm. And they said, we have something that you might like. Ooh. And Fred had this one thing yeah. in his museum mm -hmm. he would not sell for any amount of money. It was a Giordani, which was an Italian master painter wow. from Sicilia. Uh, and, uh, and it was a, a, a five foot by seven foot yeah. painting, 60 by 72, I think it was painting. Wow. And it was, had 15 figures in it. It was very, very elegant, yeah. very cool. Yeah. And uh, I kept saying, how about something for that Giordani? Yeah, nope. Yeah, yeah. nope. He'd no, say, I'm no, not no, letting no. that go for any amount of price. That's yeah. an inheritance for his kids. Wow. So I contact, I called this number. It was yeah. the executor of the estate. Yeah. And he said, I think I have something you're going to want. Yeah. My father told me that I want the Giordani to end up in the hands of Richard Turner. And his mother, Franny, said the same thing. Mm. His last will, he was 91 years old. Mm -hmm. He said, I want Richard Turner to have the Giordani. Mm. And that masterpiece proudly hangs in our home, and you've seen it many times. Wow. And Very on cool. that note, I think we should hang up this episode, because that was my last question. Awesome. Well, good questions. Thanks for asking. And until next time. Until next time. Swimming out. Switching out. Every one of these top executives, you know how they got where they are? Floated right down the middle of the river. Don't let anyone tell you there's anything you can't do.